Ogi Ina, Tiki People. Thank you guys. Hello, everybody. Thank you guys. I think the way I prepared for them was to physically get bigger and stronger and more muscly and stuff. It was important. Unlike in Split, where I'm just like running about for the last two minutes of the movie in the dark, pretending to be the beast. I was actually not very big at that point, but I didn't need to be. This time I'm running about in broad daylight for maybe 60% of the movie with my shirt off, and I'm meant to be beastly. So I had to eat a hell of a lot of food. I ate five meals a day for about four months and I trained every day, five, six days of the week. Beasts should be ready to pounce and ready to strike. And, and so we would talk about how we would do that and which muscle group we would employ depending on what shot it was and all that. It was pretty, it was pretty specific and detailed in terms of our approach. Um, Patricia, because she's so religious, she cares so much about her faith, and um, I think she's always fantasizing about it. I think she's always thinking about it. Is Mr. Glass, is he my first? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's probably why I loved playing her so much, that we had this secret the whole time that the audience don't really get to see. There's a nice thing to always have in, in the back of your head. Hi, it's Samuel L. Jackson. You're watching Peaky Cast. Not as uh, dictatorial as he used to be. Figured out a better way of relaying what he wants mm -hmm. from us in terms of how he wants us to tell a story or, or, or act in a particular scene, as opposed to just saying, do it this way. <laughs> If anything, he's smarter than he was. He's had a lot of time to sit, think about what's going on in his world. I'd probably write you know, great movies or, you know, hopefully uh, come up with a cure for something like um, Alzheimer's. Make it a little hard to the camera, also. A little what? Hard to me. Oh, that? Yeah. <laughs> we get you guys too. <laughs> um, well, the first part of it, it was always supposed to be a trilogy, and I decided not to do it. But then as I made it, I started to get really excited about the character again, and I was like, all right, all right, if it does well, let's finish it. So I, I you know, it was one of those things that kind of tricked myself back into, back into making it. Um, I don't know the actual connection of the of the thing. <laughs> it, it's possible that the artist that did it at Universal did do exactly what you sh showed there, and so they look very, very similar like that. I bring him on to my movies as a big brother, as an advisor. I talk to Jason, I say, what do you think about this? What do you think about casting that? What do you think about this release date? Well, you know, we, and so he's somebody that I bounce ideas off of. And we both believe in this kind of lower budget approach to storytelling, be more free. Yeah, definitely. I picked the particular colors for their psychological reasons. A green for David, because traditionally that's, that's life -giving, the life-giving qualities of life, and, and David is a protector of life. The ochre or mustard color of the beast is a kind of religious color that he thinks of himself as that here to protect the broken. And the purple for Elijah is royalty, and he thinks of himself as one of the most important people in the world. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. But I mean, if you had 23 different personalities, couldn't one be super strong and one be super smart? And, and then just like bring it all together. Gaming the system. I'm definitely one of those. I'm 120% one of those people that's like, you get three wishes, but like I wish for like 19. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. one of those people. That's uh, my answer, you go. I feel like I'm, I don't know, like such loyalty to like, like I, I feel like I have to. Have, and like my character idolizes mm -hmm. his father, so I think I have to go with yes. super human strength, right? I love that we both we both picked the person yeah, yeah, appropriately. Yeah. I wasn't surprised at all about that. I think Free Casey is a, a much more put together, you know, 
she feels worthy in herself for the first time ever. I mean, I was so excited to get to play Casey again, but then immediately I was like, wait a second, she's been like placed in this very small enclosed room for a long time. Like, what is she like in the real world? And, and how does she interact with all of that? But it was it was incredibly emotional to get to reprise a character and to, and to get to grow alongside them. That was pretty special. Personally, it was so cool uh, just to be coming back after all this time um, and be working with Knight again and of course the Sam and Bruce and the whole crew. So it was really fun to um, sort of connect the dots between the two. Amazing to meet you. Probably the most memorable scene for me was one I did with James McAvoy and I watched him play six characters in four and a half minutes and it was one of the most extraordinary acting feats. I felt very lucky that I was sort of having a front row seat for, for something really extraordinary. All of them, really, yeah. I mean, it's that thing, Sam Jackson talked about this not long ago when we were in London about how, you know, sometimes you do a movie and you kind of never see each other again. You don't really talk until you're doing things like this. And um, But that hasn't been the case with this one. Everyone has stayed really sweet, it's nice. As James is playing, oh. playing all of his characters, I think it would be. I think they should just do a female version, and then yeah, that's how I can keep the the story going. Come out, see Glass, and see what Mr. Glass is up to. Hi, picky people. I hope you enjoy Glass. Uh, please go and watch Glass and have a very good day. <laughs> <laughs>